Next, from preserving food to helping athletes recover from injury, a growing number of industries are working in the field of cryogenics. Now a school in Oxfordshire has become the first in the UK to open its own high-tech lab. The new facility at UTC is giving students the chance to develop their own science experiments with liquid nitrogen. Jessica Bannum has been to take a look. He took the chance of a lifetime. Freeze a human being. For some, it's the answer to life after death. It's cold. You think he's dead? <laughs> For others, pure fantasy. But cryogenics, the science of freezing things to extremely low temperatures, does have some very real-world applications. I'm going to make some ice cream using liquid nitrogen. So if I just pour this in here. And what happens here is that when you're putting the nitrogen in, the, the material you're making your ice cream out will cool a lot, lot quicker, which means the crystals that form in the, the ice crystals are going to be a lot, lot smaller. And the effect that ends up having is that the ice cream has a, a, a creamier consistency or taste creamier to the person. So a lot of uh, higher-end ice creams will tend to do that. In this brand new lab at UTC Oxfordshire, students are being given the chance to run their own experiments with liquid nitrogen. Because it's an opportunity that very few people in the country will have. So obviously to employers, um, me having that experience looks really impressive. I want to go on to do astrophysics at university and part of that there's kind of how satellites function and stuff and satellites make quite a large use of cryogenics to keep their equipment cool. And cryogenics is being used in a number of other fields as well from the freezing of eggs and sperm to boost your chances of conceiving, to the transportation and refrigeration of frozen food, and even in the sporting world to help players recover from injury. It's a growing industry that requires an expert workforce. There's a shortage of suitably qualified young scientists in the area. We've got Harwell over just about five or six miles away. Um, it's the centre of cryogenics in, in Oxfordshire, it's the centre of cryogenics in the UK, uh, and there's a shortage of suitably qualified people. For the students, it's the chance to see science in action. So in the younger years, in their lessons, sometimes I will be bringing the liquid nitrogen out or doing a demonstration. So rather than showing them a video, now I can actually talk about it. So while those who've been cryogenically preserved may still be frozen in time, staff here hope the next generation of scientists will be inspired to make fresh breakthroughs of their own. Jessica Bannum, BBC South Today.